Emily was working on a project when she noticed her fingertips started bleeding. She looked down and realized that she kept biting her nail and caused the skin to rupture. It has been an old habit of hers that she could never control. She always wondered why she keeps doing it. Does it have something in common with her mother constantly picking her skin? When she spoke to her mom, Emily discovered that they both have BFRBs, body-focused repetitive behaviors. They are chronic, either unconscious or conscious behaviors and often result in physical and psychological difficulties. Common BFRBs include skin picking, hair pulling, nail biting, cheek biting, nose picking, and other excessive grooming rituals. People can engage in only one or several of them. Emily, like other people, engages in BFRBs when feeling bored, frustrated, stressed, dissatisfied, or impatient, among many other causes. This helps to reduce stress and feel better. Emily has a mild form of BFRBs, just like 60% of her peers who engage in behaviors occasionally. However, the pathological form, which interferes with the daily functioning, is observed in less than 12%. The majority of people have little or no conscious awareness of it and no intention to cause pain or injury. It might cause some harm by increasing the chance of infection, changing one's appearance, introducing functional difficulties, or, like in Emily's case, inducing shame. It is important to mention that these behaviors are on the self-harm continuum, but are not the same as self-injurious behaviors such as cutting. However, if you engage in self-injurious behavior, you are likely to have a BFRB too. So why do Emily and her mother have this disorder? The cause of BFRBs is yet unknown, but there is evidence of it having a genetic component and being more prevalent in females. Meaning, if someone in your family has BFRBs, you are more likely to have it too. In addition, if your family has substance use disorders or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, you are at a higher risk of having BFRBs. Hearing all of that may be scary, but Emily is not sick. Having a BFRB that does not interfere with your daily life is not considered a disorder. In rare cases, less than 5%, when the behaviors spin out of control and severely interfere with your daily functioning, you might be clinically diagnosed with BFRB disorder. The BFRB's disorder is categorized as Obsessive Compulsive Related Disorder. Obsessive Compulsive Disorder and BFRBs share the need to routinely perform certain actions, but BFRBs may be carried out without conscious awareness. Emily's BFRB is not interfering with her life. She just feels relaxed and concentrated when biting her nails. These behaviors can soothe you and help deal with chaos in your life. Some individuals with BFRBs are organizational perfectionists, meaning they have difficulty relaxing and often set unrealistic standards for themselves. So BFRBs simply keep them busy. Emily's mother talks to a dermatologist about her habit in order to restore the skin she picked, and most people do the same. The proper resources and support, however, can be provided by a physician or a psychologist. Speaking to a psychologist might be better because many physicians have limited knowledge of BFRBs or its treatment. Psychologists may recommend Emily and her mother one of the following. Habit reversal training, substituting the unwanted behavior for something unharmful to keep busy. The comprehensive behavioral treatment, CBT, conscious evaluation of behaviors, triggers, and preventions. Therapy or group talk. And lastly, medication, which helps in certain cases, but is not specific to BFRBs. Hopefully, Emily now understands what BFRBs are and seeks professional help to deal with it.